Goes inside for Zlatan who tries and back heels the ball and he's done it. Zlatan Ibrahimovic with a back heel flick goal. This guy, can he be stopped? I see Zlatan making a good run. Still Zlatan. Goes for goal. Zlatan Ibrahimovic is genuinely unstoppable. How is he doing this man? I have no idea. So we are back again with another episode of the AC Milan career mode series. This is episode number 7. And this one is going to be a big one because the transfer window is finally open. We're in the month of January and expect transfers in this episode. Expect outgoing transfers as well. It's going to be chaotic, but it should be a lot of fun to watch. Adama Traore has been on my shortlist for now, a few episodes at least. And in this episode, we're going to try and make this transfer happen. So get ready for a ridiculous transfer window special episode because it's going to be a lot of fun. If you guys are enjoying the AC Milan career mode series, Keep the support coming in. Let's smash our 2,000 likes once again. And if you are new around here, do subscribe for more FIFA 20 career mode content. Before we get into all the transfer business, we've got to get through a press conference. And as always, if you guys want to get involved, drop in your questions down in the comments section below. First question, in my opinion, you should buy Sandro Tonali because he's well-rounded and he's got high potential and he is Italian as well. If there's one midfielder I want to see at AC Milan in this series, it's probably Sandro Tonali. We know his potential, we know his talent. The next Andrea Pirlo maybe and bringing him to AC Milan could be huge. But first, we've got other positions we need to address. Like, of course, that right wing position where we're trying to bring Adama Traore. So once we're done with all that, maybe we go in for Sandro Tonali. But at some point in this series, I really want to see Tonali play for AC Milan. Maybe we can sell off Bonaventura, get the funds and of course go for Tonali. That could be a real option. I'm telling you, man, there's going to be so much transfer business in this episode. And even in the next few episodes, it's going to be crazy. This next question is actually a pretty important one for the series. Piatek is unhappy in real life. And is on the verge of leaving, so will you sell him? So, since the last episode, a lot has happened in real life with AC Milan. They've just gone ahead and sold Piatek to Hertha Berlin. They've sold Ricardo Rodriguez. I think it's a loan deal, though. And they've also got rid of Suso. I think he's joining Sevilla, if I'm not wrong. So, we want to try and keep this series realistic. And that is why we're also going to transfer list these players, get them out of the club and bring in replacements. Now, the best part about this is that all three of these players have kind of been underperforming for us anyway. And I was already looking to replace them. Piazek, maybe not. But since he's, of course, left AC Milan on a permanent transfer to Berlin, I think it just makes sense to transfer list him. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We might end up signing another striker though because I think we need someone better in that position. So hopefully we can sell Piatek for big money. But as I said, man, this window is going to be crazy with all the transfer business we've got planned. Next question. Do you plan to search for Zlatan's regen once he retires? Absolutely. Hopefully in the second season of this career mode, we can identify Zlatan's regen. And the first thing I'm going to do is give him a big contract here at AC Milan and time to the club for the rest of the series that's going to be the plan so hopefully we can find Zlatan's region how good has Zlatan been for us man 15 games 16 goals if we can get someone similar his region in this career mode that would be amazing so hopefully we can find him soon and sign him up next season so that's the press conference wrapped up let's move on talking about Zlatan Ibrahimovic the man has yet again won the player of the episode award he's just insane man how does he do it I have no idea Last episode, he scored four goals and now he's the top scorer of the Serie A with 16 and 15 games. It's actually crazy how well he's playing and no wonder you guys voted for him as your player of the episode. This really is a pretty big episode for the series. In real life, AC Milan signed the young American left back from Wigan Athletic, Anthony Robinson. And that's why we're going to sign him in this series as well. And he's going to act as Ricardo Rodriguez's replacement. So Milan have done this in real life. Let's do it in this series as well. First of all, we do need to know the valuation of Robinson and, you know, get to know his stats and all that. So we're going to wait a bit before we make the transfer for now, though. We're going to try and wrap up the Adama Traore signing. I really want him to be an AC Milan player, so let's make it happen. All right, so the goal is to try and get Adama Traore for somewhere around 15 million. That would be the dream. I know it's, it's a bit too cheap for someone as good as him. 
Let's see if it will actually work. 15 million? Nope, they're not going to be willing to give him away for that much amount. So let's counter with about 17 and just, just see what Wolves come back and say. We know how important he is to that Wolves side. So of course, they're going to try and play hardball. But you got to keep in mind, he's only 78 rated. So... They should, you know, agree maybe to 19 million. Like, come on, accept 19 million. I think that's a solid offer for Adama Traore. Let's see what they come back and say. And they're going to analyze our offer and then make a decision. That's tough. Let's see what happens, though. Also, look at this. Ricardo Rodriguez is glad that we've made the decision to sell him. So hopefully we can, you know, sell him soon, get the money and use it elsewhere. All right. So Wolves have gotten back to me. 21.1 million is what they're saying. I'm pretty sure we can get through more negotiations and get that down a tad bit so let's offer flat 20 million we've got to be stingy man we don't have unlimited funds so let's see if 20 million is enough for Adama Traore and it is finally we've gotten the transfer fee sorted so 20 million for Adama Traore I think that's brilliant okay so this is what I'm offering Adama Traore rotation squad role five-year contract length about 60,000 in wages and a 300,000 signing bonus is he going to accept a reduced amount of wages I'm not too sure, but let's just see what he says. And well, there you go. He's accepted that Adama Traore is now an AC Milan player. We've already made our first signing of this window and it's a banger. Would you look at this? Adama Traore is now an AC Milan player. Imagine the pace on our attack with this man and Vinicius Jr. on either side. It's going to be brutal. This guy is a physical specimen and I'm hoping he can come good for us in this series. Take a quick peek at our season goals. More goals from Zlatan in this episode would be class. Again, I'm still struggling with the defensive offense challenge. So hoping we can make progress with that in today's episode. And also more progress with the Brazilian challenge would be amazing as well. So it's time to take a bit of a break and get into some gameplay as AC Milan face Sampdoria. This one is at home at the San Siro. We're going to be playing this one. It's going to be Adama Traore's debut and I'm excited. Ooh, press conference questions being a bit interesting this time. Will Traore make his debut? He'll prove he's the right man. He is going to be starting in this upcoming game. I genuinely can't wait to see how he plays. Imagine the balls he's going to whip in for Zlatan. It's going to be a sight to see. So I'm using the 4-4-2 formation for this one against Sampdoria because I feel like this formation is so much more effective than the previous one we were using. It gives us more width and also Adama Traore and Vinicius are going to have a field day with this formation so I think it'll work really well and also talking about Adama he is making his debut in this one against Sampdoria. We've got Ibra starting as well, Torreira in midfield. Romagnoli does have a bit of a knock but I reckon he should be able to get through this game so this is how we've got the team lined up. Let's get right into it. I'm genuinely so excited for this one. Adama Traore making his AC Milan debut. This is going to be epic. Here he is already on the ball and look at the pace, man. This guy is genuinely rapid. Whips in a fairly decent ball, but it's cleared away this time. But the pace, man, you can feel it. This is certainly not good as Sampdoria are on the attack. We've got to defend this well. Bonaventura is tracking the run. He's actually done really well there, so fair play to him. Here's Ibra. Looks for Vinicius straight up. It's a good pass, and here goes Vinicius Jr. down this left flank. Still, Vinicius looks to bring it back inside. Goes for the passing option to Bonaventura, but that touch ruined the attack. We really should have done better there. On the counter-attack we go with Vinicius Jr. Looks for Zlatan Ibrahimovic with a great pass. Zlatan isn't the quickest of players anymore, but he still has the techers. Looks for Adama Traore. It could be a goal on his debut, and it is. Adama Traore has made a ridiculous start to his AC Milan career. He's already on the score sheet. We expected him to be crossing it, and instead he's actually even scoring goals now. What a signing this could turn out to be. Zlatan Ibrahimovic being unselfish, he did the right thing, brought it inside, laid it off to Adama, and of course he was going to score there, but look at the pace he had to, you know, get into that position. It was unreal, and a brilliant finish as well. 1-0 up AC Milan. That's a very good cross that comes in. Romagnoli had to deal with the attacker there, and he did so And as we avoid conceding. Sampdoria playing some good passing football. We don't want to let them get a shot off here in this position, but they probably are. That's well defended by AC Milan and we survive. And now we could potentially be hitting them on the counter-attack with Adama Traore. Now Zlatan. Rebic looks for Adama once again. We know he's got the pace to break through. Still Adama Traore. It's brilliant. The run is absolutely amazing for him as he whips the ball back in. That's what we want to see from Adama, but this time 
we couldn't get the finishing touch. Sampdoria playing around our box really well as Shed had to put an interception there and thankfully he did as we could be on the counter attack here as Adama looks to chip this one for Rebic who should get there first. Go on Rebic a chance for him to score. Rebic gets the shot off. Keeper saves Vinicius on the rebound. Can't get the shot off. Oh it's brilliant composure but somehow their keeper managed to keep that one out. Ah that should have been 2-0. Ah, here's Latan. Looks to get this one on that right foot of his still. Zlatan Ibrahimovic goes for goal and this guy is just a goal machine. He's going to score even if you give him a half a chance. And well, we gave him a half a chance and well, he's put this one in the back of net. A brilliant goal from outside the box. The fact that his shooting is so good in this game makes him just so much fun to use. You can literally pop a shot from literally like anywhere and it's probably going to end up in the back of the net. Like this is, this is just insane. Zlatan Ibrahimovic with what his 17th goal of the Serie A this season just incredible. Teo Hernandez looks absolutely finished in terms of stamina so we're gonna bring on Ricardo Rodriguez for the remainder of this game. And there you go a big win for us against Sampdoria a convincing win. Adama Traore's debut was a massive success which I'm really happy about so yeah the perfect scenario three points in the bag. Traore has put his name on the score sheet for the first time as a Milan player. What do you make of such a strong debut? I'm just gonna say he can offer us more because I know this guy is just insane. We're gonna continue training his stats like finishing and all that so he's gonna be amazing for us. Alright so after the Adama Traore transfer we're left with about what 7 million to spend but that's not enough at all for all the improvements we're looking to make. So have a look at this we've got a ton of players that we're looking to transfer off the club like Piazza, Krunic, Ricardo Rodriguez and Suso. We're just gonna have to be patient until we get the right offer for these players and then we get the money in and we can make more transfers. That is going to be our plan of action. As always, if you guys have any transfer suggestions left for various positions, let me know in the comments section. We're definitely going to be trying to sign that Robinson guy for, of course, the left back spot. I'm probably looking for a defender as well. Maybe replacing Bonaventura is a good option. Up top as well to replace Piazek again. So many positions to improve upon. We've got a lot of work to do in this series. Ooh, this is big. United have set their sights on Piazek for 29 million now. That's a lot of money, but I think we can get a lot more for him. So let's negotiate with United and see what we can get for Piazek. All right, so I'm countering 38 million to just see what United are willing to say. Are they going to accept this or not? Let's find out. In fact, they are. Maybe I should have asked for more. 38 million for Piazek. That will have us a ton of money to invest now. Ooh, things are getting interesting in this series. An offer coming in for Ricardo Rodriguez, this one's from Arsenal, 9.7 million, let's see if we can get more. So I've countered with 11 million, let's see what Arsenal come back and say and well they're willing to pay that amount so brilliant. We still are going to need more information on Anthony Robinson so we're going to be patient and play our next game in the Serie A and then we'll move in to try and sign him. Gotta keep pushing with the Serie A games as up next we've got Cagliari away from home. We are right now third in the Serie A tied with Atalanta. We've got to keep that momentum going and keep winning in this competition. We are pretty far away from the title at least but definitely guaranteeing the top four spot this season is the goal so for that we've got to keep winning. Also look at some of the crazy transfers going around. We've got Davinson Sanchez to Dortmund, Joe Gomez to Valencia, Thomas Muller to City. That's a bit of a weird one and also this Gosens guy to Hoffenheim, some really interesting transfers going around. Cagliari versus AC Milan, now I've gone for the strong team but I definitely have made a few changes. Rafael Leao is back in the lineup, we've got Kessie and Paqueta in that midfield. Caldara starts at the back but apart from that, the regulars are all starting. Traore keeps his spot after scoring in that previous game. Zlatan captains the side, Vinicius in the team. Let's go out there and get the job done against Cagliari. Here goes Latan Ibrahimovic on the attack. Ibra looks for Rafael Leao. Now chipping this one for Adama Traore. Could be another goal for Adama. It's off the crossbar. That's where maybe the finishing comes into play of Adama. But it was still a fabulous attempt. He just got really unlucky. Oh, not good. The pressure is getting up to us in this one. And well, Cagliari have taken the lead. Way too much pressure there for me to handle. I got really caught with my defenders there. Couldn't clear the ball away. And Cagliari have taken advantage. That's tough. Well, we do have the firepower to get back into this game. So let's give it our all. Cagliari looking for Adama. That is what you want to see again. Look at the strength of Adama Traore. The guy is just insane. Still Adama here. Looks for the cutback to Zlatan. He has to score. No, how have they blocked that? That was a golden chance for us. 
Zlatan goes back to Paqueta here, and this could certainly cause problems for, of course, Cagliari as Paqueta does brilliantly there. That is a wonder goal from the Brazilian. I mean, the dribbling there to get it onto his left foot was just simply class. The close control required to do that was just unreal. And then he set it up perfectly, finessed this one past the keeper, and well, we're back in it. It's 1-1 against Cagliari. Paqueta scoring a beautiful goal. The guy has been incredible for us in that central midfield role. Not good, guys. Not good at all. Cagliari have somehow scored again, but I think this one's ruled out for offside, is it? I think it is. Yes, it is. Thank God for that. It's still 1-1, but Cagliari, man, they're actually causing us problems. Here goes Paqueta to Zlatan. Zlatan controls it well, but the final challenge got to him. He's still recovered, though, as he flicks it, tries to flick it over the defender. Still Zlatan Ibrahimovic, an unbelievable attempt from him, but couldn't keep it on target, unfortunately. Here goes Adama Traore just before the end of the first half. Adama cuts this one back for Paqueta, who's going to score his second of the game. And again, a decent finish from Paqueta, this time with his weaker right foot. And Adama Traore with the assist. I mean, what a signing he's turned out to be. He's just so direct down that right flank. He just ends up creating chances that way, like with his pace, beating a player, and then just cutting it back for Paqueta. It was a brilliant move. And AC Milan have taken the lead in this one. 2-1 against Cagliari. Well, this is not looking good. It's brilliant dribbling from Cagliari, and they almost equalized there. We got lucky. Not looking good for us as Cagliari getting in behind down that right flank. This is dangerous as it's a good ball played in and we couldn't deal with this. It was just brilliant play from Cagliari and well, this is turning out to being a tricky game. Two all against them. They're putting up a tough fight. Kind of feel like we need to make some changes and that's why I'm bringing on Rebic for Rafael Leao. And also let's bring on Torreira for Kessi. Hopefully this added quality helps us win the game. Oh, this is not good. We've given the ball away in silly fashion to Jao Pedro. That is such an annoying goal to concede. So many times I've done this, man, in my career modes. Like, honestly, like giving the ball away in stupid fashion and that costs us again. Not good as Cagliari have broken through once again. They could actually be scoring another goal. Thankfully, Donnarumma has pulled off a great save here, but... Man, this is looking like a game where we're going to lose. Cagliari seem to be second to every single ball. Every 50-50 is going their way. They, their players just seem faster than ours. And we just can't seem to compete. Like, look at this. What on earth was my midfielder doing there? We just cannot handle them in this one. Not good, guys. We've committed way too many players forward. And now they've got a simple chance to score here. And it's a goal. 4-2 down to Cagliari. Uh, this kind of feels like a, just a just game where we've been hard done by because we were doing pretty well and then we just made that stupid error from the back and that just, uh, that just uh, was frustrating. Anyways, 4-2 down and it looks like we're going to pick up a defeat in the Serie A. Full time in this one, a frustrating result as we get our second defeat of the season. It's, it's a tough one to take, I'm not going to lie. We were doing so well and then to get a defeat like this, it's tough, but we got to pick ourselves up and continue and move on. The good news, well, even Atalanta lost, which means we are still in that third position in the Serie A. The bad news, well, Inter and Juventus continue to, you know, just get away from us in the league standings. Both of them have already reached the 50-point mark, while we're 11 points behind them. So, I don't think we're going to win the Serie A this season, but top four is certainly our goal. Alright, so back we now go to transfer business and look at this. We've got a pretty big offer for Bonaventura from Napoli for about 20 million. And you know what? I'm going to negotiate, try and get this fee up and sell him. Because the reason being, Paqueta has been so much better than him in midfield that I feel like it just makes sense to use Paqueta there more often. And since Paqueta is already, you know, growing so well in his overall... It's, it just makes sense to do that. And then we can use Benacer as backup. We actually don't even need to sign a midfielder. So that is what I'm looking to do now. Selling Bonaventura for as much as possible and using Paqueta as my first choice. Bonaventura is 30 years old anyways. It's just the right thing to do at this point. I've got to say Napoli's initial offer was a pretty good one. But let's counter with 22 million just to see if they're willing to pay this much money for Bonaventura and they're only willing to pay 19.7 min million so you know what I'm not gonna you know complain about it I'm gonna accept it it's a good offer and there you go I think the deal is done and would you look at this Piatek has been sold to Manchester United if this transfer wouldn't have happened in real life I probably wouldn't have sold Piatek in this series but since he's now a Hertha Berlin player in real life it just makes sense to sell him even in this series so he's gone for about 38 million and also transfer offer coming in for Suso and it's a pretty tasty one 
of about 26 mil. We're gonna negotiate with them, try and get that fee up and let's see what happens. So I'm countering with about 30 million and hopefully we can get this deal done. We've already got Adam Atraure, Castilejo in the team. We don't really need Su, so he's left AC Milan even in real life. So let's get this deal done. And West Ham are willing to pay the 30 million. So that is a lot of money we're gonna be getting. And even Ricardo Rodriguez has been sold for about 11 million. And right now we've got about 50 million in our transfer budget. And we also still have this sale of Suso to come through. So we've got enough money to make quite a bit of transfers. Since we've sold Ricardo Rodriguez, we do need a backup left back. And in real life, AC Milan are going for the American Anthony Robinson from Wigan Athletic. So we're going to do the exact same even in this career mode. He's 73 rated at the moment, left footed of course. He's got some great stats for pace and all that. So I think he'll be really good in game. So let's try and make this deal happen. So I'm going to start off with a 5 million offer. I think that is a decent amount of money. That's his current value. Let's see if Wigan are willing to accept that. And they are. Wow, that's actually a quality deal, I would say. A youngster like him for that fee, I'll take it. So these are Anthony Robinson's demands. We're going to remove the appearance bonus. 20,000 in wages and 180,000 in the signing bonus. I'll take that. Sporadic squad role, four-year contract length. He should be accepting this as an offer and there you go, it's done. We've made our second signing of this transfer window. So I guess that concludes our transfer business for this episode. We've still got a striker to sign potentially, probably even a backup left winger because our only left winger right now in the team is Vinicius Jr. So having some depth could be vital and also maybe even a defender because I'm not too keen on the likes of Cher and all. So... Let's see what we can be doing in the next episode. We've got a lot of money left, 42 million plus the money we'll be getting from the Suso sale. We've still got maybe one or two players that we can sell, like, of course, a Krunich. So a lot's going to happen in that next episode in terms of transfers. As always, if you guys want to get involved, drop in your transfer suggestions. They're going to be really helpful. So far, this window has gone well. We, of course, made this signing of Adama Traore. And, of course, the youngster, the fullback, the American left-back Robinson. Here's a quick look at our season goals as well. We couldn't really make much progress, but Zlatan did score a goal in this one. Also, Paqueta with a couple of goals helps us with the Jogo Bonito challenge. So, I guess not all that bad. Before we wrap up this episode, time for you guys to make your vote count and vote for the player of the episode award. A couple of nominees as always. The first one being Adama Traore. What a start to his AC Milan career. He's already scored, he's assisted as well. The guy is insane and that's why he's been nominated. His second nominee is going to be Paqueta who was really good in this episode, scored a couple of goals and was in general dominant in that midfield. And now he's going to be playing even more for us, so that's great. So those two are your nominees, Adama Traore and Paqueta. Click the i button on the top right of your screen to vote for either of them. So, time to wrap up today's episode. It's been an eventful one with a lot of transfer business, a lot of outgoing signings, and all that is just going to continue even in that next episode as we try and make more improvements to this side, maybe sell even more players. It's going to be a ton of fun. So, if you guys have enjoyed today's AC Milan career mode episode, make sure to come in with your support by dropping a like on this one. And if you are new around here, subscribe for more FIFA 20 career mode content. And well, I'll catch you guys next time.